Ladies and gentlemen, let's review Game Incentive.com video. Let's discuss a recent article that's been doing rounds on the internet at the moment. It's got the rather provocative title, Why PS4 and Xbox One May Not Face Memory Limitation Issues in the Long Run. And this comes to us from the game base engineers, because they're discussing effectively how Game Biro is going to be interacting with the next generation console, so in other words, the PS4 Xbox One. I've gone ahead and take the, taken the liberty of also creating this as an article because I'm going to make a few references throughout this video, so it's probably going to be easier for me to just um, provide links and stuff in the article form so you can produce them at your leisure. Um, and we'll go into more on that in just a second. So let's give you a quick bit of overview first. I'm pretty sure most of you all know this, but it's good just to keep in uh, everyone up to date. So, the previous generation of consoles had a rather lacklustre, to be frankly honest, 512 megabytes of RAM. That's not including the fact that some of this was actually taken away by OS functionality. No, surprising, no surprises there. To be honest, even at the time of the console's launch, that would be the Xbox 360 and PS3, I followed them fairly religiously, as you'd expect. I was somewhat concerned over the lack of RAM. I had expected to see a gig or so, but... It wasn't to be, um, and both machines split up their RAM rather differently. Anywho, um, Sony managed to claw back quite a bit of extra RAM in the end. They managed to shrink their OS footprint, which did help. But the problem was, um, if you were to be totally and utterly honest, you could probably have seen the problem a mile away. That was a lot of problems there. Um, and that was the movement towards 720p. So obviously larger textures and so on eat up a lot of RAM. Um, not really a surprise or anything, but anyway, I'm probably going to butcher their names terribly, but I'll give it a shot anyway. Brian Tawalski, uh, who is a marketing, marketing director over at uh, Gamebase, and you've also got Yu J Huang, uh, who is a lead engineer over at Game Biro? They provided a very short commentary on what they would think the future holds for both machines. He said, In the next release, Game Biro will support 64 bit platforms and 4 gig of RAM or 3 gigabytes effectively limit will be removed. This is obviously pretty bad. Uh, out of out of a quote for a second. Basically, the current build of Game Biro is 32 bit XE, which is sucky if you're trying to access more than uh, four gigs of RAM because obviously it simply can't do it which is pretty much useless in modern gaming but anyway actually this requirement from the latest console and DC, uh, DCC tools which stands for digital content creation on top of it recent graphics APIs and platform support of GPU virtual memory combining both of them will largely reduce the limited memory issue so he even went on and said, one of the key trends in the API rendering is command buffering based rendering, which enables multi-core CPU utilization for sending command buffers into the GPU. Game Biro is making progress in increasing this functionality. So I'm going to do a little bit of translating. I've provided a more in-depth explanation in the article, but I'm trying to keep this brief. After all, you can't really skip so easily in a video as you can just skim read. Um, a command buffer is quite simply the place where commands are going to be sent to the GPU. So pretty simple. Um, and obviously multi-core now, it's pretty obvious. I mean, look, most APIs in this day and age, if you want to be competitive, particularly in consoles where it's even more more important, I mean, PC owned is bitch, but we've got CPU cores which are considerably more powerful um, in terms of weight. So, in other words, not only IPC instructions per clock, but our uh, core clocks are a lot higher than consoles, and it's still very important for us to be multi-threaded anyway, let alone a uh, games console, which have eight CPU cores, six are available for games, just uh, for clarification's sake. And they also added, also, rather than forcing developers to use specific lighting slash shaded schemes like physically based light and rendering, I'm sorry, we are working to offer a more flexible material based system to allow artists to express their imagination, imagination intuitively. 
To that end, our artist tools, including DCC tool plugins, will deeply integrate with Mech slash Maya in order to aid artists in producing a more detailed in-game graphics. That's not really a surprise, to be honest. Most game engines or third-party tools nowadays, they pretty much all will integrate with 3D Studio Max or Maya. Uh, some of them also do it with Blender because they're pretty much industry standards. Um, depending um, on your budget and so on, obviously, some people just can't afford the licensing of Max and Maya, but it's becoming cheaper. There are ways around getting quite cheap versions, particularly if you're using it as students and so on, which a lot of indie developers are. Anyway, um, I'm kind of going off the beaten topic here. So, many of you immediate when, when I mentioned about the whole virtual memory system, you're probably screaming about tiled resources or possibly even vo volume tiled resources. Uh, if you're familiar with the changes for DirectX 11.3 and uh, 12, presumably. Uh, if you need more information on that, I've linked it in the article. I've done a full analysis. And also, you can't forget that Sony also have their own version of tiled resources, um, which is known as partially resident textures. There's a link to a PDF from Sony. Somehow or another, I managed to miss it until just recently, this bloody PDF, and I should cover it because there's actually some stuff in here that I've glazed over it's actually from 2013 which gives you an idea how old this is but anyway um, so there's a few things for us to remember right now there is still going to be physical ram limitations for both machines there's five gigabytes available for developers that's not including um, the three gigabytes for the OS reserves that's why you've got the eight gigabytes total both machines are extremely memory hungry um, for their OS reserves it's not really surprised if you look at their um, underlying features obviously you've got a couple of OS's running simultaneously on a virtual machine on the Xbox One, one obviously the larger reserve is for the Xbox One's uh, game functionality and the other one is for like Connect and so on. It's actually quite a cool idea I quite like the idea actually of the memory segmentation on the Xbox One in some ways I think it works extremely well and Sony well from what I can gather and from what other people can gather the basic idea is that there's a large portion of RAM on the PS4 that's simply doing very little. The amount of RAM differs depending on who you ask, but I'm hearing rumors of between 512 megabytes to 1.5 gigabytes. The common number is about 1 gig of RAM that's quite literally just being reserved and doing literally diddly jack diddly crap. It's just sitting there. And the reason supposedly this is happening is because Sony aren't really sure how the console is going to expand in the future. So we could get a situation where they say, you know what, let's just assume it's 1 gig. They could say, you know what, we don't need any of this RAM. We're fine with how we are. We're just going to go ahead and give it all to developers. Or we could have a situation where they're like, oh, shit, we need this for this reason for the OS. Or we could get a situation where the developers get, say, 512 megabytes. And we're talking game developers here, just to clarify. And the OS claims back another 512. But once again, um, that figure does change a little bit depending on who you ask. But the typical figure that I'm hearing is 1 gig. But anyway... So obviously you've, you're still going to have RAM limitation limits depending on exactly how a lot of this is going to work. Partially resident textures is not going to be a saviour at this point in time. You've also got to account for other concerns, primarily GPU and CPU compute. I'm very curious to see how the next generation consoles, that's a PS4 and X1 of course, I'm not talking about you know the Xbox 2 or whatever the balls the next Xbox is going to be called, um, I want to see just how well this is going to work with partially resident textures for a couple of reasons. One, the hard drives aren't particularly super, super duper fast, so there's going to be that, particularly if there's a lot of loading in between. And secondly, how is it going to impact when the consoles are already doing so many other different things at once in terms of the GPU? So it's it's going to be quite a curious situation. I'm not necessarily crapping on the technology, I just... I don't think it's going to solve the issue, which is what some websites reporting these comments are meaning. Oh, okay, well, the system's got this unlimited, you know, you could put in a one terabyte hard drive, and now, guess what? Your system's got eight, you know, one terabyte of RAM for textures, which, of course, it doesn't really quite work like that. Anyway, 
thought I'd bring it to your attention. I've um, been a bit rambly this one, but hopefully you've uh, found it somewhat interesting. I'll see you soon. Take care, my friends, and bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.